road to success is brought to you by Equity Bank. Equity Bank. You are listening to Caring Partner. Innovation is the mother of all necessity. On Road to Success, we'll meet Dr. Oscar Agad, who turns trash into cash. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. We're joined by an entrepreneur whose passion to see a clean environment turned it into cash. Karibu sana. Thank you. Dr. Oscar Aghan. Doctor, you're coming from your company called Corec Limited. What does Corec stand for? Corec stands for Continental Renewable Energy Company, which is a a private limited liability company uh, which has evolved over the years out of research. Uh, basically, a medium entrepreneur who saw an opportunity in uh, the suburbs of Kariobangi, uh, having seen a lot of litter, waste plastic, and was curious to turn it into some reasonable use. And uh, out of that, I decided to start up a recycling firm. So you're talking about taking trash and make it into cash. So in other words, you see garbage and you saw gold. Yes, I saw gold. How did that come about? There's a lot of waste plastic in Kariobangi. Plastic littered everywhere and uh, in various forms. So I was curious, like, is there an opportunity? Is there something I can do out of this? And having been a machine fabricator, I run, had a company, a small business outfit in Karibangi, where I would fabricate crushers, fabricate push mills, and other machinery. And I realized that uh, with that abandoned waste plastic that littered everywhere, there was an opportunity to make money. And not just make money, at the same time, clean up the environment. But how long had you stayed in Kariobangi before, you know, that bulb went on? Well, for quite some time, i had been in Kariobangi since the mid-90s, although working, I mean, running a business there part time when I was uh, formerly employed in the private sector. And there was still garbage. And there was still garbage there. So why now? What happened? Every time you see a problem, if you're an entrepreneur, you'll have the, you'll have the passion to turn that problem into an opportunity and that is what it takes to be an entrepreneur how did you turn it into cash when i realized uh, the concentration of this trash kept increasing as we went down towards dandora because a lot of it was dropped by trucks and uh, at some point they decided to visit that site and i realized so much and that was basically around 2003 I realized there's so much of that trash, you know, waste plastic, which is not biodegrade, and a lot of things came in my mind. If I could turn that into something useful, like a fencing post or some manhole cover, and uh, I thought and saw like that was a good opportunity that would enable to fulfill my ambition. I've always been an innovator before. Is this something you had an experience on? Had you done the post somewhere else? or? I've seen a lot of what you call timber posts being sold at the roundabout. And uh, I know that uh, uh, having worked in the built environment, timber is an expensive, a scarce commodity. And I thought, like, is there not a substitute that can work just like timber? And uh, born out of that opportunity was coming up with a product that will more or less be a substitute to timber. So is this one of them? Yes, this is a, a fencing post sample. How long does it take you to do this? It takes me four minutes 
to generate four minutes to make a seven-foot post. With this kind of product, um, what are the advantages over, you know, the normal posts that we normally use? Well, there's quite a number of advantages to this. One, because it's very aesthetic. The finish is very, very attractive and smooth. Number two, it's insect resistant. If you're going to use it in a, a swampy place, it's not going to biodegrade. Right. It's not going to rot. And uh, if you're going to using it where there is a demand for firewood, they cannot use it as timber. And other than that, uh, from an environmental point of view, it goes a long way in clearing the, uh, what you call the clogged or the littered ground and the greening the area more and indirectly contributes to conserving our forest because it's coming as a perfect substitute to timber. Do you have any other products outside of the fence? We've got a lot of other products. We've developed a racing tile out of this from the same garbage which is also very aesthetic. We've developed manhole covers out of it. We've developed bollards. We've developed planks out of it, which could be used as a, for, as, a, as a timber to make outdoor furniture. And uh, in the process, I realized uh, there's a lot more and more products that we can do out of it. Soon we'll be having roads out of it. Soon we'll be having paving blocks out of it. So take us through a process of, you know, how do you actually get the garbage? We tried to organize women groups and youth groups at the site who would go in, pick up, clean, and then bring them over. We've got the machinery that will, the various machineries that will crush them into other different sizes. Uh, once we have what you've got, what you call a crusher, which will crush the hard plastic, and there is what you call an agglomerator, which will crush the soft plastic, the juala, the stubborn, which, uh, and a mix of that, extruded at different temperatures in different molds, should be able to get us all the products that Alia mentioned at a very affordable cost. So I imagine you, you know, there's a lot of people working for you because they're actually collecting. Absolutely. Before you answer that, um, let us go on a break. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Stay tuned. Equity Bank has made paying taxes easier and more convenient for you. With your e-slip from KRA, you can now pay your taxes at any equity branch countrywide. Take advantage of our extensive network of branches across the country to pay your taxes today. Welcome back. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Just before the break, we were talking to Oscar of Correct Limited. Uh, Oscar, tell us about the you know, number of people, job opportunities that have been created by this innovation. There are numerous job opportunities. Directly in the factory, we have engaged about 15 people who work as crushers or machine operators, cleaners, we try to clean with a lot of women that we have that uh, do the cleaning and they sort out various types of plastic and indirectly in the field where the collection sites are, like in Pandora, in Karibangi, in uh, Ruaraka and other counties, we have uh, assembled them into groups, uh, what you call formal CBOs and uh, we pay them depending on the number of kilos that they deliver. And that directly to date, we have about 25 people. And uh, most of them look uh, have like three to four family members. So there is a multiplier effect on it. And uh, it goes down through the value chain where we also create jobs indirectly once we supply the end product to the hardware, 
and to the builders. And other than that, as uh, machine fabricate, where we, our farm, we also fabricate machines there. There is a lot of uh, artisan skill in fabricating these machines. We don't import anything, there's nothing imported. And that has gone a long way into creating job opportunities in what is referred to as the Juwakari sector. Okay, I'm just curious, is this, is, have you patented this product? Yes, we have. Yeah. We have patented this product. The roofing tile has already been patented and uh, it's taken quite a bit of some time. The patenting process has taken us about four years and we are looking forward to franchising most of uh, other entrepreneurs in various counties and that should go a long way in creating jobs in all the counties that we have and even regionally in the commercial region. Is, is your product called Corec? It's called Corec. This is a Corec fence or Corec post okay. and uh, the tile is called Corec Raisin Post. And where can I go and purchase this? We have appointed dealers uh, in Ongatarongai, we have appointed dealers in Meru and uh, we are based in Karibandi South. You could come over, where well, you could come over and uh, buy directly too. Could you purchase through the internet? Yeah, we are on our website, uh, com. So I'm sure through this process there must have been some ups and downs. Absolutely. Uh, so could you highlight on the downs, because we are only seeing the ups. <laughs> yes, it's a long, frustrating process. For one, it's a very capital-intensive business. We make the machines in Karibani. A lot of money goes into making those machines. The machines are expensive. How long does that take? It takes like about a month to do the whole set. You've got an extruder, you've got a crusher, you've got an agglomerator. With all that, you can do all that in a month. And depending on the size of extruder you're looking for, depending on the size of crusher that you're looking for, looking at your capacity and your budget. And uh, that really goes a long way in saving this country for an exchange in what would, be, would have been used to purchase like, um, equipment from out of the country. Mm -hmm. So this is all brewed locally in Karibanki. I'm just wondering, you know, the labor that you're using. We train Are they them. dependable? They're very dependable. I mean, uh, you, we take them and train them on how to use machinery how to use protective gear while working on the machine. So it's a skill that they acquire while with us. They are very focused and they're very passionate about knowing what is to be done. And it doesn't matter how lowly educated you are, it depends on the passion. One of the things is that we also try to empower them because at some point as machine fabricators, we will be leasing out crashes to them. Yeah, because we make the crashes we leave out our crushes to them to enable them just to bring, up, bring what you call the finished products mm. without necessarily crushing them at the factory. Okay. And I think that should be able to take the youth and the women a long way. Dr. Harry, tell us about uh, some of your lessons learned through this process of innovation, the patience, you know, what are some of the things that come up? One of the lessons learned really is that uh, with passion, with passion, God has a chance for everybody. What it takes is to put in your skills, and if you trust in the Lord, He'll always reveal to you something that is never done before to anybody. It just takes the pain and the passion, and you'll get to where you want to go to. It's amazing. Um, do you see us as Kenyans, you know, get into a place where there will be a lot of innovators like yourself? I do. I've always been against the idea of people going to school to earn papers. I want you to go to school. I've always been like, yes, despite being a public health worker, despite being a financial economist, I've always wanted to see like what relevance would all those qualifications play in changing the economy, changing this country. Even though I'm not trained as an engineer, but I, a lot of my products, out of passion, is used in engineering to build this 
country and to create employment. So all those innovators out there, however small it is, what we've got to learn as a country is to patent what we do, because a lot of people do not know about the patenting process. And if this country could appreciate or make it easier to patent a process, then there's a lot of opportunity to grow Kenya, and not just Kenya alone, the continent of Africa, into reaching where the, the, the fact was at today. You know, this is so well-timed because trash is everywhere. Absolutely. Where do you see yourself in you know, a couple of more years? Where is this going to? Oh, it's going to many places. Yeah. I see, from this country, I can see us rolling out numerous franchises all over the 47 countries. I see us going into the regional market, creating job opportunities, and at the same time, creating what you call environmental awareness in terms of, in terms of using what would otherwise be choking sewers and blocking waterways into some reasonable, good employment for both the youth and the women. Dr. Tari, you have been extremely inspiring. Your products are definitely innovation. Yeah, so we, we really thank God for what you're doing and we wish you all the best in, in what you're doing. Thank you so much. Karibu sana. Thank you. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. After the break, we'll be talking to a consultant, Patrick Romero from Financial Academies and Technologies. Stay tuned. Equity Bank Group has posted a 21% growth in pre-tax profits in the first quarter ending March 31st, 2013. The group posted a profit of 4.52 billion Kenya shillings before tax, up from 3.73 billion Kenya shillings posted during a similar period in 2012. The bank's profits after tax jumped 22% to 3.